If you've been in the forces for a few years, think back to the kind of kit you were using when you first started. Some of it has changed a lot. Yesterday, we looked at how increasingly sophisticated systems have been steadily replacing decades-old kit. But what is on the way? Will Inglis has been peeking into the future at even more exotic creations. The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter is by far the most advanced aircraft in the RAF's inventory. So far, though, we've only got one being used as a development aircraft by test pilots based in Florida. But one day, whole squadrons will fly alongside the Typhoon at the sharp end of Britain's offensive capability, a world away from the Harrier it replaces. This can go a lot further, can carry much more weaponry, and also with our sensors, we have much more information around us. Technology plays an ever greater part in warfare, with the UK, as well as allied and less friendly nations, ploughing huge resources into research and development of new systems. The ultra-secure Defence Science and Technology Lab on Salisbury Plain is where most of Britain's big defence ideas take shape. But scientists now routinely deploy from there to Afghanistan to get that expertise as far forward as possible. You get bombarded with this, uh, what you might seem fairly obvious questions, but you actually have to give quite succinct answers in a very short space of time. Uh, in my field here, I work in terms of months and years for, for projects to come to fruition. Over in theatre, you're talking about minutes, hours and, and days at the longest quite often. So uh, you have to be um, on the ball all the time. The Joint Strike Fighters will eventually fly from the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. Alongside new surface ships and subs, there will be a futuristic quality to the fleet capable of striking deep in land from the sea. This is going to give us a world-class uh, warfighting capability, the ability to project power off these two huge carriers that we're currently building uh, to put us right back in the game. On the ground, the big changes are in force protection. The Foxhound will be the new battle-ready light vehicle replacing Snatch Land Rover. It's unclear which of the other vehicles bought especially for Afghanistan will survive the defence cuts but each brings its own specialist edge. There are improvements planned to heavy armour too. 50% bigger than a warrior, Scout is currently in the development stage. Cyberspace is one domain which has seen rapid growth. From a control centre in Wiltshire, uniformed personnel monitor and protect the British forces' network-enabled capability. While the codebreakers of GCHQ are widely believed to be exploring offensive cyber capabilities. Cyber weapons have in fact already been fired in anger by other countries. Stuxnet tried to cripple Iran's nuclear program, while related bugs have targeted the same country's key information systems. That makes keeping on top of the threat a priority. It's critical that the threat is ever changing, um, and so are our systems, of course. You know, the, the, your desktop computer today be different in a couple of years, so it's not even like our own stuff stands still. Everything's changing here. The threat is incredibly agile. Uh, we have to move continuously to keep up with it. The relentless pace of technological change in the wider world means defence can't simply stand still. While as recently as the 90s, it was unthinkable that from the palm of your hand you could access information from all over the world on a device more powerful than the space shuttle. The same applies to defence equipment, intelligence systems, targeting systems, communication systems, all massively more powerful now than they were just 20 years ago. And while riding that wave gives the UK forces a significant advantage, missing it could mean we lag behind a potential enemy. Despite making deep cuts elsewhere, the Strategic Defence and Security Review recognise the need for continued investment in defence technology. And as amply demonstrated, even against a non-industrialised enemy in Afghanistan, technology saves lives. Will Inglis, Forces News.